my name is Paige Clarkson and I'm one of the employability consultants based in the careers and employability team. So my role is to support final year students and graduates supporting the graduate transition and with your first steps after graduation. Just because you're no longer a student at Bassbar University doesn't mean to say we can't support you as a graduate. So the Careers and Employability team offer support for up to three years after you've graduated to help you navigate the first steps in your career. The Careers and Employability team have recently set up a new initiative called the Grad Support Unit where you can sign up to secure graduate support for after you've finished. It means we can contact you with careers initiatives that are specifically aimed at graduates such as careers events, graduate webinars, freelance and enterprise funding, job opportunities and more. So don't be a stranger, keep in touch with careers and employability and let us know how you're getting on. You can do that through our My Career platform, which you will have access to as a graduate. You will just need to register for a graduate account or you can email us at gradsupportunit at bassbar.ac.uk. You'll also be surveyed 15 months after graduation by the National Graduate Outcomes Survey. So make sure you fill that out and let us know how you're doing as your responses will help to shape our services for future Bassbar University students. We're here to help you in any way we can with life after graduation and congratulations on your graduation day. Being part of our alumni community is just a continuation of your journey with us. We still want to hear from you, we still want to talk with you, we still want to hear your news. We want you to be involved in the university continuously because you're important to us, you make us the university that we are. So we can support you as a graduate through numerous ways, including career support, they can help you with your CVs, with your interviews, there's graduate placements, there's graduate internships, there's Emerge in the studio which can support creatives in their development and so much more. It's about keeping in contact with us so that we can see how we can best support you. All you need to do is ask, all you need to do is keep in contact. There are numerous ways in which you can support your university and our students post your graduation. Is there a way in which you can support the current students or the applicants coming into the university? Would you be willing to give a talk at an open day or an applicant visit day? Would you be willing to give a talk to some of our current students about where your degree took you and the role that you're doing now? Do you work in an organisation that could provide a placement opportunity for a student or an internship? Are you able to support financially as well? So we have the Harvard Fund and various other funds which support students to enable them to fulfil their potential while they're here. Those who are facing financial barriers sometimes don't, don't have the ability to take up all the opportunities, so there are opportunities to support financially as well. But time, expertise, finance, all of those, all of those go into how you can support our students. So there are loads of ways to keep in touch. We send out e-news monthly, which has lots of information about what the university is up to, what our students are up to, what our staff are up to. We provide you with information about all of the events that are taking place on campus, which are student or staff led or, or external people coming in. So there's many ways in which you can still be involved. You can email us, call us, write to us, send us postcards. We'd love to receive a postcard from you all to let us know what you're up to. That'd be fabulous. The main thing is we want you to keep in contact with us and we want you to feel part of our community. Um, you are part of our community and you're really important and we wish you all the very best in everything that you do. We know you'll be amazing.
Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the forum. How are you? Graduates? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's meant to be a celebration. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Perfect. Now, hats play an important role in our ceremony, and I must put mine on. As you will learn, they play a very symbolic role. So, first of all, who am I? I'm Mark McGuinness. I'm one of the academic staff at the university. I've worked here uh, for many years. I'm also a member of the senior team, and it's my real honor, truly, um, to welcome you here to Bath Forum for this celebration of your achievement, our graduates. Uh, there'll be a lot of applause, but I'm gonna start by giving you a round of applause. Please join me. And I'd also like to say a big welcome, and again, please, if you would um, do me the privilege of giving another round of applause to all those joining us around the world on the live stream. Welcome, everybody. Thank you, that's, that's got us underway. So, um, if you're on the live stream, in fact, you won't need to check that your mobile phone is set to silent or off, but while I go through these preliminary um, arrangements, just re rehearsing how the ceremony will work, please take a moment to check if you're in the auditorium that your mobile phone is switched um, off or to silent. I'd be grateful. So I actually have got two jobs to do today in this ceremony. The first one um, where I will speak mainly to the graduates um, to make sure that they're aware how the ceremony would unfold so you're comfortable with what lies ahead. And in the ceremony proper, I will take us through the different stages of the ceremony. So I'll pop up onto this lectern um, to give um, various instructions and explanations and so on as we move from one stage through to the next. I think it will take us perhaps an hour so if you want to pace yourself, uh, it's about an hour, the ceremony today. I'd like to begin, actually, by just saying a few words about our venue. Uh, this is Bath Forum. It's uh, a grade two star listed building, which is something actually quite unremarkable in a world-renowned city such as Bath to have such heritage assets. But this one's a bit different. Um, if you live in the city, you do actually come here. <laughs> That's something that you couldn't say about every one of our, um, our grade one and other world-renowned um, uh, facilities that people know Bath for. The forum is used by the people of Bath to listen to music, to come here for public speaking. Um, schools use this venue as well, um, for school plays, music rehearsals, stuff like that. Uh, my own kids as well, um, when they were littler, they've crossed this very stage just like you will today, but they were dressed as reindeer at the time. But it does give you a sense that this is part of the community. Um, it's a place that people come to celebrate and enjoy themselves, and I'm sure we'll do that today. So um, th thank you to Bath Forum for working with us once again to bring our ceremonies here uh, today. I'd also like to thank our friends at Bath College, who've allowed us to borrow their nearby facilities to make things just that little bit easier uh, between robing and uh, photography and the venue. Um, other venues, we, it's quite stretched across the city and, and I believe it started raining as well, so it's quite a good thing uh, that we weren't too far away today. So thank you to Bath College. And then final thanks from me is all the staff at the university, my colleagues who've worked tirelessly to bring this public event together. And there's a string of them this week, as you'd imagine. Um, they are always a huge undertaking, and I hope that you uh, really benefit today from the fruits of their many labours over recent weeks to bring us together. I'd like to ask you, if you would, to give them a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. So, uh, to business, uh, your graduation ceremony. Here you are. And I'm really glad we're doing this on time, because, of course, for the last three years we've had to delay things and postpone and we worked really hard earlier this year to make sure we didn't have a backlog when we got to your ceremonies uh, and so I'm really glad that we are at our normal time and that's really really um, good to say. So in a few minutes I'm going to ask everyone in the auditorium if they're able to to stand for the academic procession 
So that, that will be the end of my sort of preliminary remarks, if you will. And the academic procession will enter this auditorium from the doors on the ground floor at the back. You'll see it displayed up on the screen um, for, uh, for everyone to see. The academic procession is a very important part of a graduation. The academic procession is a very colorful, splendid affair. Uh, academic colleagues wear the colors of their most recent institutions, just as I am today and as you, our graduates, are today as well. Um, so it's, very, uh, it's a very mixed and very um, uh, kaleidoscopic group of robes that will come through uh, the auditorium today. And they'll make their way up to this ramp in front of me and they'll enter the stage and assemble on the seating that you see um, to uh, my right, your left. Please would everybody remain standing, and this applies to the academic procession as well, until the Vice Chancellor, who is the last person to arrive on the stage, when she takes her seat, hers is the one in the middle, obviously, um, and she'll seat, take her seat, and that's your cue and everybody else's cue um, to seat, and then we'll be very much underway. Now, I mentioned hats. These hats are all different shapes and sizes. We've all got different tassels and all of that. But we, are, uh, we use the hats also as our last desperate attempt to control you as students as well. You're not allowed to remove your hat until you're instructed to by the Vice Chancellor. I could tell you it's bad luck or something like that, but it's a tradition. I hope you play along with it. Um, and the Vice Chancellor will do that at the point in the ceremony which is called conferment, which is a little further on after all the graduates have been presented. She will invite the platform party to remove their hats if they wish. And for the first time in uh, actually 20 years of doing these ceremonies, the previous ceremony, no one did. I don't know why. It's really hot in here. But anyway, uh, maybe it was show sympathy with the graduates, let's, let's say that. So um, you'll see what happens when they come in with us today. Now, as master of ceremonies, I'll move us through the different stages. So the procession is the first bit. Uh, then we'll have an honorary award today. So we're presenting uh, an honorary doctorate uh, today. So more of that to come. Um, and the honorary doctorate will then give uh, a thank you and acceptance speech as well. And once that's concluded, we'll move to the presentation of the graduates. Now, I'll speak specifically to the graduate part of the room now because um, you may not have done this before, possibly not, um, but we have. So please trust us. If you're asked to stand and move in a particular direction, um, it is to get you to the stage smoothly with the least fuss and safely. And you will have recognized, I'm sure, that you've been given very precise seat numbers and you've probably already worked out that that actually relates to the presentation order that our readers have. So please stay in the order that you're seated um, and we will um, have a very smooth running ceremony. You'll be asked to come down to this channel here and Naomi and Steve, who are going to give you a wave, will be there to greet you. Um, they will ask you to check, uh, to, to tell you their name. Your, no, they know their name. Uh, they will ask you your name and they will um, use that just to check that the order is still being preserved. And I will do the same here as well. I'll just be standing a couple of steps towards um, the stairwell here, which is where you will come up, the stage, up to the stage and then you will progress, progress across the stage when the reader reads your name. Um, I may try to speed things up or slow things down at various points. Um, if I think it's getting a bit too crowded and maybe that's sort of what, one of my jobs, um, but hopefully it will be pretty obvious. Um, the real pressure is the people who are at the front because everybody else follows them. No pressure, guys. Right, so uh, there we go. Uh, you will cross the stage on the blue carpet and there's another stairwell on the other side. You'll go down those steps and then you, again you will be guided back around the auditorium to the very seat you're sat in now. So you'll be getting your steps in this afternoon by doing one anti-clockwise circuit of the auditorium. Hopefully that helps and hopefully that's clear. Just follow the person in front of you and it's generally okay. Now, when we come to the end of the, uh, uh, of the presentation, we do conferment and I have to utter some words and the vice chancellor follows suit and that's when you'll be invited to remove your hats. Um, that's a very joyous moment and the whole room um, will erupt with joy, no pressure, everyone. But you will erupt with joy at that point, I'm sure, because that is the symbolic moment where the awards are conferred. 
Uh, we'll then move to close the ceremony, and we'll do so um, uh, with uh, the Vice Chancellor offering a blessing, a Gaelic blessing. Um, it's very short, uh, and uh, then we will exit all of our graduates. Um, after the academic procession has left the stage, we will exit all the graduates line by line through the door you see over there in the corner of the auditorium to your left. Uh, we do that to um, ensure that we don't have huge bottlenecking at the back of the building where everybody's trying to get out onto a road which isn't closed, whereas the door there leads to a road that we have got a road closure notice in place today, so you can safely congregate outside. So we'll move everybody out of the audience. Um, previous audiences and previous graduations have taken that as an opportunity to give a final round of applause to the graduates as they leave the auditorium. But again, no pressure, friends and family. Uh, that's the uh, symbolic uh, leave, leaving of the auditorium. And then once those have left, obviously you, you can leave, but anybody else left in the auditorium can leave by any available exit. So hopefully that's all clear. That just leaves me with a few, a few short housekeeping announcements. Firstly, could I invite you to take one last opportunity to check mobile phones? We have trained first staff available. Should you need it, if you need any help or assistance, please do get the attention of any member of staff and we'll do our best to help. And in the unlikely event that we do need to evacuate the building for some or other reason, reason there will be a very clear instruction that we need to do so. Um, and then you will leave by any available exit and be guided by our staff. So just before we move on, my chance to sneak in, a well done and a congratulations. You've been through a lot these last three years, a lot of stuff we could never have imagined. You made it. Well done. Enjoy your ceremony. We now, oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you. So we now await the arrival of the academic procession. Any minute now. Thank you. 
graduates, your guests, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I call upon the Vice Chancellor of Bath Spa University, Professor Sue Rigby, to open this graduation ceremony. It's so lovely to see you here. And apologies, the hall is quite warm, but I'd invite you to take solace from the fact that it will get warmer with every subsequent graduation. And you are graduation number two of eight. Just saying. Also, you're a very cool set of graduates, so you chill the hall a little. Um, so, friends, graduates, colleagues, a very warm welcome to the Bath Spa University summer graduations. And colleagues, please, please feel free if you wish to, to remove your hats. They have been offered that now, just bear in mind. We're delighted to hold our ceremony in this setting and very grateful to the staff at the forum and also to those in the university, particularly our brass band, uh, who worked so hard to bring off such a complicated event. But we're here to celebrate the fantastic achievements of our graduating students, the brilliant people who have given the last three years of their lives to the most difficult thing you can do, the act of learning, and learning to make real your visions and dreams. You've all followed an unprecedented and difficult road to get here, and it is so good to see you at this event. We also remember in this ceremony a young graduate who died a few months after finishing his degree in photography. Finney Mills completed his degree last year while seriously ill. His photography project documented his illness. Stephen Vaughan, his tutor, wrote, I was deeply moved, not just by the outcome of your project, but also, crucially, by your process of generating material in the midst of such difficult and challenging circumstances, with vision, clarity, and unflinching honesty. Beauty is not just about aesthetics. There is beauty to be found in persistence, tenacity, truth, and wisdom. Your art has emerged with all of these qualities and more. These characteristics of vision, clarity and unflinching honesty are what we all need just now in our art and in our daily lives. We all need to live these values and see them celebrated. In Finlay's memory, we are renaming the annual student prize in photography, the Finlay Mills Prize for Outstanding Achievement. And the first recipient of this prize, Isaac Law, is here today. And perhaps in memory of Finlay, we might offer a round of applause. We also confer today an honorary doctorate on someone who has lived by that mantra of clarity, vision and unflinching honesty for her whole professional life, most recently in the reporting she's done from Ukraine. Rita Chakrabarti is a journalist of the highest caliber and a newsreader who commands our trust through her authority and clarity. I'm delighted that she's with us today and we will hear from her later in the ceremony. Now, each degree accomplished comes with a narrative of hard work, late nights, panicked requests to demonstrators, panicked emails to staff, coffee, and shall we say, stress-busting cakes with friends, perhaps something stronger, and a growing sense of confidence and capability. Very few of us emerge unchanged from the process of studying for a degree, and indeed we shouldn't, or it wouldn't have served its purpose. As with any life-changing event, growing up, having children, falling in love, you can't imagine it until you've done it. And then everything is altered. You can't go back now. The process of getting this degree has made you anew. So can I invite our graduates to just take a moment to reflect on their own journey to this point? You probably remember 
all of the disruptions of COVID, but hopefully also all the joy of coming back onto campus and being able to study at last in person and with your peers. You should be enormously proud of yourselves and all that you've accomplished. None of us, especially those of us here to celebrate with you on the platform, think it was easy. So just take a moment to think about your journey. It's unlike anyone else's, and it's what validates you being here today. Last year when I said that, there was about a 10 second pause and then someone's watch went off. <laughs> and I thought maybe that was telling me something. So hopefully you can carry that on in the pub afterwards. But although studying for and receiving a degree is something individual, at least we hope so, um, it's accomplished within that supportive framework of friends and family, some of whom are here to celebrate with you today. And in a moment, I'd like to ask you to stand up turn as best you can to face your friends and supporters and give them a big round of applause. And as you do that, to think about the people here in the room with you, but also all of those who gave you support and encouragement are unable to be here today, but are unquestionably thinking about you now with enormous pride. So if you would, would you stand up, turn to your supporters and thank them in the traditional manner. I, I always think it would be fun if we could take one chair away whilst you're standing up. <laughs> I do a lot of these ceremonies. So <laughs> no need to stand for this one. But can I also ask you to join me in thanking those staff who've taught and supported you in other ways during your studies. I'm privileged to lead a group of outstanding academics and professionals who have you, their students, always at the heart of what they do. They work late hours, and many of them, and are delighted, almost as delighted by your attainments as you are. So please join me in thanking them now. <clears throat> this is a high point of our university calendar, a day of great joy, but also of great sadness. You might think of a university as a set of buildings or a set of historic achievements, but in fact, it's a community of learners, nothing more and nothing less. And you have been a central part of that community for some time now. When you go, our community is lessened and we will miss you. While we'd have it no other way than that you graduate from our world and move on, you leave a big gap and we are very sorry to say goodbye. But keep in touch. You are always part of the Bath Spa community. And if we can help in any way in future, let us know and we will do our best. And we would love to hear about your successes and stories in the coming years. And we are a community to be very proud of. Our roots stretch deep back into the 1850s. And since that time, some of Britain's finest artists and teachers have worked with us but we are a university of the 21st century, designed to meet the challenges of a rapidly changing, post-industrial, highly volatile world. You graduate into uncertain times, but with an academic armory that will allow you to thrive. You are creative, critical, analytical, able to dance on the margins of knowledge and open your mind to the unknown. You don't rush to quick decisions. You don't rush to blame. Rather, you bring your high-level academic and creative skills to bear on a problem or an opportunity. And in doing so, you make the world a better place. A degree in art and design disciplines is testament to your confidence and deeply creative skills. The pandemic has been a hard time for creatives, but we're well on the way to recovery and opportunities are opening up again. 
One thing we've all learned during lockdowns has been the importance of making, of designing, of creating, as individuals and as a society. We require art and artists, culture and creativity to be our best selves and to look in the mirror of who we might be and why we might choose to be that. You will provide that mirror in the course of your lives at some cost to you and to the great benefit of others. Your skills will help many people to be their best selves as you bring joy and challenge into their lives. However you choose to use your invaluable skills, we wish you satisfaction and fulfilment in the years to come. Success for you may be out in the world, or it may be inside a small group of valued family and friends. But remember from here on out, there is no external metric of achievement or success, only the small voice inside that expresses pride and determination as you make your way through life. But if I had to choose a set of people to make a difference and to make things better, it would be you, our graduates. And just now, I can ask no less of you than that you thrive in your life journeys, that you make a difference, and that in doing so, piece by piece, you change everything. You have the rest of your lives to spend, and I will be delighted to watch as you spend it wisely and for the benefit of others in these unprecedented times. So well done, graduates. Have a great day. You have earned it, and I congratulate you. Well done. So we now move to the presentation of awards. The university has, within its gift, the authority to award honorary degrees to individuals whose achievements and activities resonate with our core values as an institution. We now make one such award, and I'm very pleased to invite Jonathan Glasspool, Chair of the University Board of Governors, to propose the award of Honorary Doctorate of Education to Rita Chakrabarti. Hello everyone, um, it's wonderful uh, to be here, wonderful to be here in person. This is the first graduation I've attended and really wonderful to see you all uh, still awake over there. Uh, you're allowed to nod off once you've bowed to the vice chancellor. Um, as I was squeezing myself, into my suit this morning, I reflected on the fact that I probably wasn't the only dad here today who has overcompensated for the three-year horror show of Zoom calls and online team bonding sessions by resorting to the all-too-real biscuit barrel. Um, We've heard a lot of about inflation and how awful it is. Uh, inflation can be expressed in all sorts of ways, graduates, uh, as you can see from your parents. <laughs> as a dad with two kids at uni, this inflation got me thinking more seriously about how tough it's been for this graduating class over the past three years. The extraordinary challenges you have had to overcome, the events you've missed, and the non-events you've had to live through. It makes it all the more pleasing to see so many of you in person here today. And it got me thinking too about the support, practical, financial, but above all, emotional, that you've needed and I hope you've received from parents, grandparents, siblings, wider family, 
significant others, dare I say it, even your brothers and sisters, significant others. And this day is theirs too. And I know I speak for all at Bath Spa University when I say a big thank you to them for their support for you today. Now, it's been a particularly bleak period for the sector, but across the whole of the UK. And during bleak times, we look for beacons. And one of the beacons that I turned to, and I know that many of you did, uh, for comfort, for entertainment, but above all, for the facts, was the BBC. And it's really my enviable task to propose Rita Chakrabarti for an honorary degree in education. Uh, Rita really needs no introduction. She's a key face of the BBC News, someone we trust and respect to present an impartial and clear chronicle of our time. She's a reporter of grace, insight, and as the Vice Chancellor said, integrity. In the 90s, she covered the Dunblane killings and the murders of Stephen Lawrence and Damilola Taylor. As Westminster correspondent from 99, she reported on three general elections and the cash for honor scandal. What fun it would have been to hear her more in the past year. In her education reporting, she has covered the changes to university tuition fees and the growth of free schools and local academies. And her international reporting has included work in India, Denmark, Chile, Poland, Bangladesh, and most recently, and with great distinction, Ukraine. In all of these settings, over a 30-year career, Rita has been a voice of calm insight and analysis. We trust her because her work is consistently trustworthy, and hence of great value. And in a society that is increasingly dislocated by incompatible beliefs, and polarized commentary, and where heat is often generated but without much light, we need people like Rita. Over all the time that Rita has been a reporter, she's been educating us, not just in what is going on, but in how to look at rapidly unfolding events with clarity and honesty. If we could all learn that, we would be infinitely wiser. It's impossible to be so close to the seminal events of our country, good or bad, and not to be affected by them. And Rita engages in, in, in a huge number of ways. She's a patron of Pan Intercultural Arts, a UK charity that uses arts to empower young people who experience disadvantage. And in the past, she's chaired the David Cohen Prize for Literature and the panel for Costa Book of the Year. In an interview with her old school, Rita reflected that she was representative of women across a range of sectors who gain in, in assurance as they become more senior, gaining trust and a robust sense of self-belief along the way. Although our vice chancellor, who was at college with Rita, would say she was always supremely cool and assured. She, in turn, is now a role model for students at Bath Spa graduating today in art, media, and film. Vice-Chancellor, I present Rita Chakrabarti as a worthy recipient of an honorary doctorate of this university. Gosh, well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much to all of you and to Jonathan particularly. Um, I'm slightly reminded of being at a dinner with a 
the former leader of the Liberal Democrats, some of you will remember, the older ones among you will remember, Sir Ming Campbell, and he was given a similarly warm introduction, a glowing introduction, and he got up and said he could hardly wait to hear himself speak. Well, that's how I feel right now. Um, it is really lovely to be here with you today. Um, I had a choice of quite when to come and graduate, and I was told that art, film, and media were the loudest and the most expressive. So, don't disappoint me. <laughs> I'm honored by this award, and I really do feel that by receiving it, I'm doing it on behalf of the team. TV news is one of the biggest team sports going. A colleague of mine recently did a sort of off-the-cuff checklist of who is involved in making a piece of TV, and they came up with reporters, camera crews, producers, editors, engineers, researchers, librarians, graphics designers, satellite bookers, organizers, managers, and that was really only about half of it. And without every single one of these people, our programs wouldn't get made, or certainly not to the high standard that they are. So on behalf of all of them, thank you. Broadcast journalism has, for me, been a hugely fulfilling career. It's both exciting and challenging, and it also really matters for some of the reasons that Jonathan went through just now, because people do need information that they can trust, whether it's during a pandemic or a war in Europe, a contest to decide the next prime minister, or a squeeze on living standards that hasn't been seen for a generation. People want to know and need to know what's going on. Otherwise, how can they make decisions about the world and about their own lives? Some of you, I hope, will be considering a job in broadcast journalism, and I've run through some of the different roles that you might consider. The industry at the moment is in a great state of flux. The internet is changing the way in which we all consume news, and it has done for the past decade or so. Most of us now will get at least some of our news from websites, social media, and catch-up services. And the younger you are, the more likely you are to get your information online. It has meant that newspaper circulation is in steep decline, and broadcasters are scratching their heads, wondering how to adapt. I assume that not many of you under the age of 25 will often sit down to watch the news at 10 at 10 o'clock, perhaps with your parents, but not by yourselves. That sort of appointment to view behavior is decreasing, and those of us who work in TV news understand this, and we're seeking to, in, to evolve and change the way in which we work. You'll all, of course, know of fake news. Again, Jonathan alluded to that. It's an umbrella term for all sorts of things. News that is active misinformation, of course, but also opinion presenting itself as fact or news that's distorted to fit someone else's point of view. Sometimes real news is suppressed because it doesn't suit someone or some government's interests. In the face of these pressures, the onus is on journalists to report the facts as we find them without fear or favor. And although it sounds cheesy, I am very proud to work for an organization that lives by those values during all the big stories of recent years, COVID, of course, and Ukraine. And audiences have flocked to us on all platforms and on television, and that is despite the endless predictions of the death of TV news. They've done so because they trust the BBC. In times of crisis, they turn to an organization that they know will be straight with them. And they do so in numbers because we remain, by and large, a unifying force. So as I say, said, I do feel that this honor is not just for me, but it's for the team. It's a recognition of our shared journalistic endeavor for, for truthful information and for accuracy and impartiality. I also wanted to say a few words about you who are graduating this afternoon, um, as Sue and Jonathan both have. But I know that I am graduating with people who've had a really tough time of it. Two years of on-off COVID lockdowns have been difficult for everyone, but I think particularly for younger people. It's interrupted your education repeatedly, it's put on hold plans and aspirations, and in some cases it's placed a great strain on people's resilience and also on their mental health. All of you have done so well to have come through this very testing period and to be here at graduation, at your graduation, is testament to your resilience. 
Many congratulations. It really is, in this year of all years, hugely deserved. So thank you very much for my award. Very good luck to you for all that is to come. And I hope to see some of you in years to come as colleagues in the BBC newsroom. Thank you. We now move to the presentation of awards to the graduates of Bath Spa University, and I call upon the Vice-Chancellor of Bath Spa University to receive graduates from Bath School of Art, Film and Media. I present the following candidates for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Combined Awards. Maya Bansal. Cameron Birch Ghost. Rosie Carter. Lucy Chandler. Ella Clark. Lucy Clark. Annabelle Costello. Elena Coyne. Sarah Cunningham. Jessica Emery. Morgan Rose Green. <laughs> Megan Johnston. <laughs> Ishak Khan. <laughs> Hugo Leddingham. <laughs> Adrian Majewski. Miles Orivouye Forbes. <laughs> Leah Strachan. <laughs> Bethany Voss. <laughs> Amber Wisteria. <laughs> Bethany Wong. present the following candidates for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Creative Arts Practice. Selen Rummer Bertels. <laughs> Lior Aya Borachov Hutchings. <laughs> Shervil Fernandez. Cassidy Hannah Fox. <laughs> Portia Rose Keenan. <laughs> Myrna Mitchell. <laughs> Grace Laura Patterson. <laughs> Brandon Reeve. Lucy Elizabeth Irenaeus Smith. <laughs> Catherine Bridget Sparks. <laughs> Andrea Swan Martinez. I present the following candidate for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Creative Arts Practice with Foundation Year, Laura Burley.
I present the following candidates for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Creative Arts. Oh, sorry, that's embarrassing. Let's try again. Although doubly well done. I present the following candidates for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Creative Media. Lauren Abigail Bobby. <laughs> Harry Edward Breeze. <laughs> Lily May Johnson. <laughs> Isabel Azorio. Kieran Sol Owens. Katie Celine Pritchard. Elisetta Pilioti. Taylor David Sidwells. Jade Alexandra Somerville. Jack James Thomas. Isabel Eden Whittington. And Frederick Christopher Williamson. Send the following candidates for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Film and Screen Studies. Elise Amber Booth. <laughs> Lilith Isis Guinevere Crawford. <laughs> Jacob Hodges. Kirsty Elizabeth Thor. <laughs> Joshua Reese Jones. <laughs> Miriam Dorothy Emma, Emma Leslie. <laughs> Juan Lucas Liu. <laughs> Lauren Emily O'Neill. Phoebe Louise Charlotte Purvis. <laughs> Sarah Sepetri. <laughs> Lauren Terry Simpson. <laughs> Kira Nicole Stewart. <laughs> Archie Peter Williams. <laughs> and Iris Angelica Warrock. present the following candidates for the award of Bachelor of Arts and on, uh, with honours in film, television and digital production. Lily Mary Banyard. <laughs> Hazel May Ford. <laughs> Oliver Charles Bennett. <laughs> Altea Elizabeth Maria Bettani. Alexander Francis Foot. Cameron Botting. Mark Edward Richard Bray. Max Brooks. Penny May Vullivant. Molly Emily Calver. Craig Price. <laughs> Dominic Carlos Rounds. <laughs> Julia May Colley. <laughs> Lewis Owen Commission. <laughs> Oliver Jack Compton. 
Amelia Haley Farrell Connor, Bethan Cross, James Peter Charles Cummings, Amanda Dalinia da Silva, Thomas Reese Benjamin Davies, Charlotte May Dawson. Mackenzie James Dowding. Joe Paul Early. Beth French. Anna Louise Furnival. Isla Lacey Gashes. James Francis Golden. Benjamin Charles Greenlee. Morgan Doreen Gudger, Shanai Shazay Hall, Piers John Tenniel Hamilton, Elora Harfey, Samuel John Terence Honor, Charlie Richard Hutchings, Hannah Louise Joe. Thomas Joseph Kendall. Eason Lot Hai Lin. Alexander Linnell. Phoebe Rosemary Males. Miles McLaughlin. Phoebe Rose Melnick. James Christopher Michael. Freya Elizabeth Moore, Oscar Bradley George Morgan, James Anthony Lee Morgan, Eleanor Francis Morris, Benjamin Alexander Moss, Caitlin Jane Palmer, Ben John Pangborn, Neil Vimal uh, Patel. <laughs> Isabel Mary Paxton. <laughs> Alexander William Pearson. <laughs> Reese Lewis Perry. <laughs> Bethany Annabelle Pledger. Irina Gilda Pocklin, Bradley Callum Potter, Nicola Prout, Ottilie Elizabeth Irving R Richardson, Sky Louise Rickards Ruddick, Lauren Sanderson, Veronica Anna Sidzi Luska. Adam Jared Shepherd, Joshua Wiley Simmons, Alexander David Elliott Smith, Harry Philip Smith, Bailey Lawrence Smith, Jordan Jason Massimo Teodori Faith, Adam William Thorne. Harrison Paul Thorne, Marissa Sophia Torre, Thea Grace Viner, Leah Grace Wilkinson Holton, Lisa Wilson. I present the following candidates for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Film, Television and Digital Production with Professional Practice Year, Callum William Davies. I present the following candidates for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Fine Art. Eleni Arvaniti. 
Charlie Ann Beek, Jasmine Page Brown, Amber Josephine Buckley, Neve Isabel Clark, Alice Emma Carilli, Lily Eve Crabtree, Mitzi Mia Harrigan Dabrowski, Nicola Charlotte Dodds, Sophia Isabel Felipe Bastos Smith, Sean Panias Gilligan, George Gorrett, Eve Lily Harper, Ruby Ann Hassan, Lily Mary Horner, Sevgi Kalasoglu, Am I going too far? Matthew, <laughs> Matthew James Ketter. Ro Rowan Margaret Melling. Phoebe Monday. Megan Lily Nash. Jack Frederick Nelson. Rebecca Ann Speller. Agnes Gordito, Rachel Taylor, Evie Mae Thomas, Scarlet Poppy Rose Ward, Millie Bethia Watson, Larry Ernest Williamson. I, I present the following candidates for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Fine Art with Foundation Year. Josephine Susan Hay. And Lisa Christine Afoni Kamal. I present the following candidates for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Media Communications. Katie Elizabeth Seiko. <laughs> Lucy Dale. <laughs> Lydia Rose Duggan. <laughs> Carly Jean Griffiths. Robert Allen Harrison. Dominique Lur Jert. Janelia Rainier Morgan. Grace Page. Megan Grace Phillips. Kellyanne Sellers. Christina Lee Smith. Prina Ramesh Suka. Holly Francis Sygrove. Katie J. Thomas. Anna Marie Threadgold. Holly Jessica Baggy. Mihaela Vankova. Georgia Christie Wright. I present the following candidates for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Media Communications with Professional Placement Year. Megan Rose Castle. <laughs> Ewan James William Morris. <laughs> Jay Johnson Rich. I present the following candidates for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Photography. 
Jasmine Chloe Allen. <laughs> Jessica Angwin. <laughs> Emmeline Audra Ansel. <laughs> Sarah Marlena Biusart. <laughs> Freya Olivia Louise Chaplin White. Tanisha Elizabeth Cole. Phoebe Alice Custard. Olivia Alice Coftree. Leah Disley. Joshua Matthew Empson. Natasha Chloe Kathleen Ensel. Alicia May Horgan. Isaac Adam Gardiner Law. Grace Loveday May. Brittany Shay Mumford. Sophie Marie Pook. Susanna Rapinska. Zara Alice Stewart. Erin Georgia Towns. Saffron White. Poppy Winter. Amy Leanne Nicole Witherington. I present the following candidates for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Photography with Foundation Year. Samuel James East. Sarah Elizabeth Tate. And I, I present the following candidates for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Photography. Um, Sophia Gardicchioti. Gabriella Tiolu. Lucy Duveen Conway. Thank you. I present the following candidate for the award of Master of Arts in Curatorial Practice, Alison James Hall. I present the following candidate for the award of Master of Art in Fine Art, Amelia Sophie Dent Young Holman. I present the following candidate for the award of Bachelor of Arts. Oh, I present the following candidate for the award of what's the award? <laughs> Bachelor of Arts with Honour in Fine Art. Sorry, you caught me off guard. Minnie yeah. Wolven. Oh, <laughs> Hello, <God>. Minnie. <laughs> I present the following candidate for the award of BA Honours, Film, TV and Digital Production, Pasindi Kasat Wat Gerondu. I present the following candidate for the award of BA Honours, Media Communications, Ada Ferreira. I present the following candidate for the award of Doctor of Philosophy in Fine Art with the title A Thousand Intertwinings, an exploration of the embodied artistic processes made in collaboration with an estuarine landscape and its vibrant matter. Lydia Ann Halcrow.
No, we got everyone in, didn't we? We got everyone. Vice Chancellor, in addition to those candidates presented to you, I commend to you the other candidates listed, but in absentia, for the conferment of their various awards. By my authority, as Vice Chancellor of Bath Spa University, I confer the awards of those candidates here present and those in absentia. And graduates, in full compliance with health and safety re recommendations, you may now remove your hats. Well done. <laughs> Now, as I doffed my cap to you, some of you may have noticed that inside it says, this belongs to Bath Spa University. <laughs> Yours don't. So please make sure that each one of you gives at least one hat back to Eden Ravenscroft. <laughs> but I'd like to send you on your way with a traditional Gaelic blessing. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face, the rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may your God hold you in the palm of his hand. I declare this ceremony closed. Please stand for the academic procession.
Thank you. 